Okay, so I didn't do this, just in case you miscomprehend, but this was the winner at one of the uh, demo competitions about 12 months ago. So this, this entire executable is 64 kilobytes and it runs on a clean Windows installation. The entire thing, including the music. All of it. So, you know, not that surprising. Huh? 64 kilobytes. 64 kilobytes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, what I'm going to show you to. Oh, yeah, have I got. Does this thing work? I don't think so. Uh, oh. Is it? <laughs> Is it? It should be on. It shows levels on the side. I don't want to go too high. Let me turn off the handheld. It's on. Test. Yes, it is on. Test. Hello? Does okay, it work? Yes. Oh. Hold on, here's Test. the handheld. Uh, here's the handheld. Does this handheld. work? Yeah. Yeah, yeah right, you can cool. hear it. Uh, right. So, uh, part of the, um, part of what we've done with Ethereum is, obviously there's the, the blockchain stuff, and we have the, um, uh, we have the, the, the client and it, Sort of connects peer to peer, you know, manages the uh, manages the chain and so on. Uh, but there's a few other things that we wanted to do. Um, Vitalik mentioned the compilers, uh, but we also have obviously the browser. And one of the other projects that we have is the IDE, uh, and that's what I'm going to show you today. So I think Vitalik covered more or less like two of the modules, two of the four modules from my first year computer science course uh, over the over the period of sort of talking about the virtual machine and, and all the upgrades and stuff. Um, Everyone now familiar with, with all of that? Everyone remember the upcodes? Yeah? yeah. Right. Very good. Um, right, so uh, you won't need to remember them because we actually have, um, we actually have languages. Right. And by the way, I think in the yellow paper, the bananas are actually called autonomous objects. Um, I'm going to create a new project. Uh, the title is going to be uh, demo. And it's going to be. Okay. This is the uh, the basic ID. Over here is our project. We have uh, two files. We have the contract, which is a Solidity uh, language contract. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't do very much. We can't see in the back. You can't. Can you, you make can't. it? Can you make it? Oh, uh, really? Control plus or whatever. Uh, Command plus. Ooh, I don't think I've got that feature. I'll try. Screen setting. Screen setting. Like for blind people. I mean for us. I feel the screen setting is a little bit closer. There's a few. You can come yeah. sit here. Yeah. Really yeah. yeah. Come sit up here on the floor in front. I, are you on a Mac? Uh, no, no. I, I'm running Linux. I'm running Linux. It looks like a Mac, but it's not. There's some. We can take those stools. Anybody want to sit on a stool up closer? Well, I'll just on the floor. The floor is there. Nice and warm. Um. Okay, so for those that can't see yet, yeah, uh, the contract has two words. First word is contract, <laughs> and the second word that's the name of the contract. And in this case, I've uh, I've taken the incredibly uh, 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 interesting name of contract. Um, it's an empty contract, so it doesn't actually do anything. It has no state. It has no obvious state. It has no ways of interaction. Um, who here is familiar with JavaScript already? Hands up, JavaScript, anyone know JavaScript? No? A few, about well, half. Um, H, uh, HTML, about the same. Uh, C++? Everybody. <laughs> uh, okay, so Solidity is, syntax is kind of similar to JavaScript, but um, where we need some certain feature, where we need some certain sort of idiomatic ways of say, expressing stuff, the syntax, uh, I've, I've sort of uh, fell back on C++ a little bit. So in C++, you would write something like, you know, class um, contract. Ooh, that's weird. Uh, <laughs> 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 alright, alright, it's working again. Okay, cool. Uh, so in C++, you'd write something like uh, class contract and you put, put your methods in here. 
So in Solidity, it's it's contract. Okay. Um, the HTML um, is is very simple. It uh, it actually sets up a couple of variables. It sets up Web three and it sets up the contract. The contract is our JavaScript sort of handle for this this contract. So this contract, when it's instantiated on the blockchain, we get a handle to it in the JavaScript. It's called the contract. Okay. So if we if we start typing in here in the body, so if we type like hello world, there it is, hello world. Now we can save this, and as you can see, it comes up at the bottom. The bottom is just a preview of the page. Okay. We have um, we have a script, a couple of script tags here that we can put our JavaScript in. Um, now one thing we can do is we can get information from the contract. So simple thing, simple thing. We can write a constructor in the contract. Now this executes whenever the contract is created. Okay. To make a constructor, I'm not as fast typing as I would normally be, I'm going to do it with one hand. Sorry about that. Um, we, we can initialize stuff, so we can do stuff here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a number. Numbers can be int or uint. Uh, so, int, the, uh, so solidity is typed. Two other types are uint and int. I'll go to the other types later. Um, uint are just unsigned integers. That's what we kind of default to. They're all 256 bits wide. Uh, because that's the width of the, uh, the Ethereum virtual machine. Okay, so uh, we're going to call this just something simple like x, okay? Um, and we're going to set x to a number, we'll set x to 69. So when I run this, okay, I can run contracts with f5, and what about f5 does it, is it deploys them? Uh, it wants us to be able to uh, So uh, when I hit f5, this contract's going to be sort of created and deployed in this like fake little blockchain world that, that this, uh, the IDE mix has inside it. So there's F5. Um, in the fake little blockchain world, it actually first creates a couple of other contracts because these are really handy to have around. One of them is the config contract, which stores a bunch of um, like indices to other contracts, and the other is a name reg contract, which is like a registration, a name registration contract. So it's a bit like Namecoin. Um, the third thing it does is it, is it creates this new contract, which is called, you know, imaginative, imaginative name of contract. There it is, contract. It's called the constructor. And, um, and what we can do is we can double click on this. And if you remember when Vitalik was showing you the opcodes and, uh, and how they were altering in the virtual machine, we can actually go through the opcodes and see how it's altering. Um, actually, in the constructor, all it does is it's going to store 69 at wherever it's going to put x. I think it'll probably just put x at zero because it, it starts counting from zero. And there you go. In storage now, we have 69 stored at the position zero. Okay. So that's that's what the x equals 69 does. And then as it goes on, it's actually going to copy the code uh, of the contract. There isn't actually all that much code um, into where it is on the system, into the account. So that within this this fake blockchain, it's got um, it's got this this contract's code. Um, actually associated with some account. Um, okay, so what if we want to get um, this value x out, out of the contract and into the world of JavaScript where we can do all sorts of crazy things like you know uh, animations and, and drop shadows and all, all what they do in JavaScript. Um, well, what we can do is we can write um, a span called the idx, okay? And initially, we'll just say it's, I don't know, we'll call it uninitialized. Okay? And if I save this, it'll just say hello world, then it says uninitialized, right? Because we haven't done anything with it yet. But what we can do is document.get element by ID. Um, so what this is going to do is, is give us the JavaScript object that represents this span, this, this uninitialized piece of text. And we can alter the inner HTML, right? Now, you can alter it to something um, static, like initialized. Okay, and if you press Ctrl S, then it will just change it to initialized. Like, wow, you know, uh, this is really basic stuff. So, hands up here if you've understood what I've done so far. Not everybody has their hands up. Okay, good, everyone's there. Um, <laughs> right, now, 
We want to, we don't want to initialize this to initialized. We want to initialize it to, well, whatever the contract, whatever the contract thinks X is, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask the contract, so we're gonna there we go, that's our contract. And we're gonna we're gonna ask what X is. So how do we ask what ask what X is? Well we just do dot X. Okay? If I control S this, it's got 69 there. So what that represents, it's created the contract on the blockchain. It's then um, got this page, and this page is intrinsically also connected to the blockchain through uh, weird and wonderful magic that we've spent a while working on. And what it's done is it's exposed the contract that's actually on the blockchain to us in JavaScript land. Yeah? Now, one of the things we can also see is this, um, this is the transaction recorder. What this does is it records all the interactions with the blockchain that come from our JavaScript. Um, so we, I've already been through the first three. There's also a fourth one now, which is the X function. So this is equivalent. This is, comes from the fact that we call X right here. And it's recorded the fact that we've called X. It's also recorded the fact that we've, the fact that we've called X with no value, right? So we haven't given it any ether. But, uh, it's uh, recorded the fact that it's we've called X on the contract, contract, called the contract. I should really change that. Bananas. <laughs> and that it's, uh, it's got an address. This address is the, the, the address of the contract account. Can I ask you a question, a quick question? Sure. When, when you say contract, I mean, I know the simulation, but in the real world, when you say contract is on the blockchain, like Bitcoin, it will go into, into, the, into the network, and some miner will validate it and put it into the blockchain? Correct. It, it, okay. It's actually sitting in the blockchain. So. Um, as Vitalik mentioned before, whereas Ethereum has accounts which tend to hold value, I mean, sort of, it's done by unspent transaction outputs, but um, there is a, there, there can be an abstraction layer whereby you see um, accounts in Bitcoin that have value. Um, in Ethereum, it's kind of the same. There are accounts and they have value, but they also can potentially have code associated. And the ones that have code associated, we call bananas or um, contracts or autonomous objects. In this case, the contract is an autonomous object. Now it contains code to allow us to get X, right? So there's actually a piece of code in there that, that checks to see what we want to do, and if we want to get X, it will go and fetch X for us and give it back to us. And what we can actually do is double click on this transaction here, on this, this entry, this X entry, and we can step through what, these, what this call is doing, what this transaction is doing. It's actually a call, not a transaction, because when we, it knows that this won't change anything in the contract, so it knows that there's no point going to the blockchain, because nothing's going to happen. So it will only cost you money, and there's, there's no point just paying money for nothing. So it actually just does it all locally, it gives us the answer locally. No need to go to the blockchain. Say again? Can we have an hour look at the contract? Can indeed. There's the contract. Now you'll say, well hold on, how does it know to make, um, to make code to give X. Well, it knows by virtue of the fact that X doesn't have private before it. If it had, ah, if it had private before it, it wouldn't have the code there. But it doesn't have private before it, so it does have the code there. But I was gonna skip over that, but thanks for bringing it up. Um, so if we go back to this transaction, we can see what it's doing is it's looking in the uh, in the storage. It's fetching, here we go, it's S load. So that, what that does is it takes this zero here on the top of the stack and turns it into whatever is at zero in storage, which in this case is 69, and that's the value of X, right? And then it's just going to basically return it. And there's the return. I have a quick question. Uh, you're, you're showing uh, the uh, op codes here you know, this, um, you know, virtual machine language for this call to extract the value of X from the blockchain, even though it's not going to be run by any miner. Is this just, could you explain the rationale for that as opposed to? Yes. Uh, the rationale is that if we had a function um, that actually did do something interesting, for instance, Then, actually, I'll tell you what, there isn't actually a, a reason. But it's not something that we've optimized yet. So the code is there in order that we can call the contract from 
uh, JavaScript and use EVM code in order to do that. Um, so it provides a single interface to interacting with a contract. Okay, so this is just kind of convenience for development yep. that you know when you're extracting the value out for the JavaScript, you're using interfacing with the database using the offloads or the machine. So the the other reason there is another reason, which I'll get out again. So this requires knowledge of the fact that there's two contracts on the blockchain. Okay. So if we had another contract, contract um, uh, two, ah, let's call it bar. Okay. Now if contract bar knew about the contract foo, and we'll put this afterwards so that it actually knows what. And contract bar had some function and its initializer. And what it actually wanted to do, um, we happen to know that this is an address there. We could do this. Actually, I think we could do that. One of those two. Yeah. Now, that's why it has to be actually code in the, in the contract. In the, on the blockchain. It's so that another contract could potentially call into that contract to get what the value of x is. Because it can't look directly in, it, in, in the first contracts. Let's call that. Can't look at Baz's x directly can't get it access to its storage. So what it has but to do is later ask on, I guess, now in function bar, I guess, is that supposed to be That's the contract. Baz? That's the, um, that's the uh, constructor for the bar contract. So really, this, this is something that I'll cover later on. So um, <coughs> okay, okay. you should, you should, you should. Okay, I'll be okay. Long okay, so what we have now is a contract called Baz. Okay, now Baz has a single uh, piece of state which is this integer, unsigned integer x. We're setting that x to 69 when we, uh, when we create it. And what we're interested in is knowing uh, what that x is from our JavaScript plan. And so in order to know it, what we can do is ask it for x. And that's what this is. The contract.x just gives us access from JavaScript to see, hey, what, what, is, what is this x that you have? Why do you have to say that? Because x is not function. It's just about you. Uh, it's the syntax. Okay. <laughs> um, um, it's only, the contract is only ever the last contract that you've made. Um, so at the moment, multiple contracts aren't properly supported. That's something that we'll do. Okay. Now, we could also have, suppose we want to allow the, uh, the HTML um, some form of access. Maybe we want to allow it to increment x. Okay. So what we can do is add the add the ink function. Okay. And the ink function, all it's going to do is uh, is is make x one larger. Okay. Everyone understand what I'm doing so far? Yeah. Good. So back in index.html. I have to somehow, you know, make it increment the x. Maybe I want to, make, let's call x total. Okay. And we'll, we'll initialize total to zero. We actually don't ever need to initialize anything to zero because they're automatically zero uh, anyway. But um, now if I, if I um, deploy everything, and save it, then yeah, we've got our, our zero there. Rather than calling it hello world, I'm actually just going to label it totally. Okay. Now, what I can do is when the web page loads, I can call ink. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do is put it before I ask what the total is. Uh, can anyone guess? When I, uh, I can deploy this now, um, can anyone guess when I reload the page what it will say? <laughs> One. If I reload again, can anyone guess what it will say? 
and I can keep reloading it. Okay, let's make it slightly nicer, and let's add a button. Okay, so we're going to give the button. Actually, I don't need to give it a name. I'm just going to give it an on click. Is it on click or on clicked? I always forget. On click. On click? Yeah. Okay. So what I can do is just put this code in there. Does anyone know why it's not doing anything? Right. Now that, that's kind of annoying, right? Because I don't I would really like to sort of have that happen. Now what I could do is is kind of cheat and have some sort of update function in here, but that's a bit horrible. And it might be that somebody else has clicked um, increment somewhere in another browser and it's gone to the blockchain and it's incremented it. And and how do I get notifications that that has happened? Now this is something that is, is going to be a perennial problem with dApps, getting things not just onto the blockchain, but also off the blockchain again, right? Knowing when something has happened on the blockchain. Um, this is what uh, a load of people have, have had to build numerous uh, workarounds for with Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin doesn't deliver this functionality <coughs> as standard, right? This is something they have to build a bunch of middleware around in order to get that stuff off. Um, well, with Ethereum, we've made your job incredibly easy. We have a function. We have a thing called an event. Okay. I'm going to make an event called incremented. And I'm going to say that when it, when ink is called and the token's gone up, I'm going to mention that it's been incremented. So I'm going to emit this event. And in the HTML, well, I'm going to call this update. So I'm going to call this, this, uh, this function update. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the contract. That's my contract. That's the one that I know about. Everyone understand so far? So if, if it's incremented, you're going to call update. 